know more about the surface of Mars than we do about what's under the ice sheet in Antarctica. My name is John Prisky and I'm a professor at Montana State University. My research focus is in polar regions, so I've spent about seven years of my life on the ice. Since I started working in Antarctica in 1984, we transform our whole way of thinking about the continent. It's not just this benign block of ice anymore. It's a living part of our ecosystem. My first time I went to Antarctica, it was in 1984. As I flew down in this military ski plane and looked out the little oval window, my first glimpse of the continent, as far as you can see, is just solid white. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. It's about one and a half times the size of the United States. And it just struck me that it cannot be devoid of life. You can't have that much real estate on Earth that's not alive. At that time, I started studying microorganisms. People didn't believe that there were microbes in ice. And that kind of compelled me to prove them wrong a little bit. The Lake Vostok, and I call it the gem of Antarctica because it's one of the largest lakes on our planet. It's been ice covered for 15 million years, and we were able to get some ice from the Russian drilling project, and we showed that there was a living ecosystem in solid ice. We'll see, and we'll figure out how deep the lake is. Firstly, it's really exciting because you don't know what's down there. We're not even sure if there's a lake down there, a water body. We used a hot water drill where we melted the glacial ice. We were the first ones to drill through the Antarctic ice sheet into a subglacial water body. forget the, the moment when we broke through into a lake and you could hear the cheers. You could hear the cheers through the whole field camp. As a scientist in any field, you, you always want to make a breakthrough. We're finding life where we never thought it would be. For 15 years, I was writing review papers based on circumstantial evidence that Antarctica was alive. And I was having troubles getting them into journals. And finally, when we broke through, it changed the entire way we think about that continent. And it changed my life, for sure. In Antarctica, I actually crossed paths with a few NASA scientists, and we talked about how these Antarctic systems could be analogs for what we were seeing on Mars. And then through the ensuing years, as I was learning more about life in solid ice and under ice and in complete darkness, it made a lot of sense. There would be life beyond Earth. Planets now have habitable zones similar to what we would see in, the, in the, an Antarctic or a Greenland situation. Actually, this month, we're going to send up the Mars 2020 rover to, to collect cores and then set them on the surface of Mars. And then within the next decade, the plan is to send another rover up to retrieve them. We'd be in denial, honestly, based on the scientific evidence, what we, we know on Earth about the niches for life and the habitability on Earth, and what we're learning by the day of, of habitability of, of extraterrestrial worlds. So I'm a believer 